I'm Cindy with Earth Science Resources and today we're going to talk to Dr. Dennis Donaldson. He's a professor at the University of Delaware and a secondary educator. Um, um, Dennis Donaldson, Dr. Dennis Donaldson, um, just a guy who likes uh, nature. Um, I have a family of, uh, how big are we now? Family of five um, and I've been teaching with the University of Delaware for a little bit of time in which I, uh, I teach a, a general geology course that covers earth systems for the most part. And um, I also teach on a secondary level in which I teach physical science and physics. So if we kind of uh, work the clock backwards a little bit, um, Right before I became a secondary educator, I was working with the Department of Energy in Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania. And there they have this National Energy Technology Lab. And there it's, they're focusing on uh, energy, energy resources, energy uh, related geological uh, processes, as well as some, um, some kind of legacy ones. And when I say legacy, I'm talking about um, if we think of energy in a legacy type of framework, we're looking at uh, how has our energy, our energy uh, story kind of evolved over time. So legacy would be um, for anything impactful, oil from a long time ago. Back, back in the day, we used to get our oil from wells. And then um, in Pennsylvania, we had one of the first, if not the first oil well that was ever um, erected and struck oil. And so that was sort of the the, uh, the spark of the oil the oil boom in North America, and uh, so there's a lot of legacy wells that were there. And some of my work that I did there was to locate them, um, get a spatial recognition of where they're at, map them, put them in a data set, and, just, and determine which wells needed to be uh, addressed environmentally, and um, which ones were uh, logged but have a good job of being addressed. And, it's, it was all it was almost like a, a minefield because you you're dealing with thick thick um, thick vegetation and and a decent topography of 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 not you know you're talking about the Appalachian so it's like mm -hmm. you're just running around this these state parks looking for wells so it was a uh, it was it was exciting but you know um, it was part of the work that I did there and then prior to that I was a, a graduate student of course at uh, Louisiana State University. And uh, of course, that's where I met you. And we shared our co-advisor, um, or we shared the same advisor, Alex Webb. And um, there I, uh, I worked with structural geology of the Northwest Himalayas. And um, I'm not gonna bore you with the details of my research, but uh, had some great times in uh, Northwest India and in, in the Himalayas that, that uh, exist there. and did some good structural mapping, structural work there. And prior to that, I was just a physics student in undergrad at Virginia State University. So it's a funny story where we talk about um, how chance works. Um, I was introduced to Louisiana State University because of a, a colleague of mine in the physics department saw a pamphlet sitting on a table. I was leaving a class and there was a pamphlet sitting on the table that that was um, that was kind of promoting a program at Louisiana, Louisiana State for minorities. And I was like, huh, well, let me just reach out to these folks. I got accepted to the program and then that was it ever since. I was like, so we're working back. Undergrad, I'm thinking, I'm not doing physics. I'm going to go see what this, this uh, ge ge geology program is at Louisiana State. And from then I was hooked on geology and has loved it ever since. So that's that's pretty much my story on, on uh, my geologic journey. Yeah, so that pamphlet really just helped everything click. Yeah, <laughs> like you said, was like, yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in undergrad, I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I know what I wanted to, I wanted to go into geology, but I just didn't know how, right? I didn't have, there's no geology department at, at uh, Virginia State, right? There's no earth science department. I didn't, I didn't know what the next step was, you know? And so it's like, I'll just go ahead and do this, right? Let me see how this goes, you know? And so 
what do you think? So now you work with a lot of youth in high school and early college. So what would you tell to a student that is in that exact position that has an interest, likes nature, kind of knows about geology in the background, um, but doesn't really understand it and has no awareness about the opportunities or what it would be like to actually pursue that path, pursue that career? Since undergrad, since since graduate school, I've learned a lot about how to approach what you want for a career field, right? Like you got to go at it with a little bit more nuance than I did. Mine was kind of like, I'll figure this out. <laughs> and so, um, no, that's not that's not the way, the best way to go about it. But I would say never, never look at yourself and look around and say, are people like me doing this? Are people like me not doing this? And, to, and that, that, let that be your measuring stick to determine if you want to do something. No, if you if you want, if something interests you, right, you, you make that an internal judgment call and go and do it. Um, and then you see, then you, you rebalance, you recalibrate, hey, did I like this? Did I not like this? All right. And then if you liked it, what you should do after that, go into bro labor of statistics. What are some things I could do with, with this career field? How much can I make? What's what's the and then you do further research? Okay, how what is the lifestyle of people who are in this in this field? Um, are they making a, a social impact? Are they doing are they doing good work? Are they doing meaningful work? Right? And so those are those should be some of the decisions that you make going into it. But the first thing you need to do is do something, right? Just try try it out try like i'm out here climbing mountains okay i like it though right so mm -hmm. i can't see myself not doing that not not that not having that as a, a facet of my life anymore it has to be right i took a trip just to tell you how this can impact a student right um sometimes we need to decompress right we need to reset especially in these times we're dealing with right so it's like man i gotta i haven't been camping I haven't done this. I got to go. So I just drove up to the Adirondacks and spent like a weekend by myself. I was like, all right, I'm gonna go climb this, go climb that. Let me go get a, topo uh, a topographic map and then kind of like see what's the safest way to get back home to my kids, right? So because you want to make sure you're not going down anything too sketchy, right? And so, but those are the things that now I can, I can attribute to me finding something that I love, right? And so you're never going to find what you love if you don't go looking. Mm -hmm. You got to go look. So that's how that's, I hope that I answered your question. <laughs> yeah, no, and great insight. I, yeah, that's great. Thank you.